All right, well, I'm going to jump into this last one, guys. I know I'm out of time already, and uh, I'm just going to move through it quickly. It's just a couple of pages here. Um, but it's talking about empowering. Uh, so equip is to prepare. Empower is to send. All right, this is what Jesus did. All right, you guys have seen me long enough. Now we're going out two by two. You guys go this way. You guys go to that village. You guys go over here. You guys go. And now you, you go make disciples. You go preach the gospel. You go heal the sick. You go cast out demons. I'm not going with you. You go. All right? That's what empower looks like. Uh, we, we say it this way sometimes. You, you watch me, I watch you, then I'm out. All right? <laughs> that's that, that, that's how, how we kind of do mentoring. Um, so, again, we're building for growth, not for control. Uh, I, I talked about we're always looking for the next generation. Well, what the discipleship that we're starting right now is for 100 years from now. What's a Novo Church? What's Wichita going to look like in 100 years if we really decide to get serious about discipleship? There's power in accountability and community. <coughs> and this is about a relationship, not a class. All right, those are my notes I hit on the side, but apparently I hit all those already. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. basically together. They planted a church and Paul left Timothy to run one of the churches and he continued to mentor him and teach him as he empowered him, right? He, he empowered him, left him there, you run it, but I'm still helping, I'm still teaching, I'm still writing you letters. And so he wrote this to Timothy. He says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. All right, I, Paul, taught you, Timothy, you, Timothy, teach reliable men so that reliable men can teach others. That's what discipleship looks like. Is that I didn't just disciple you for you, Timothy. I discipled you for them so that when you disciple them, don't disciple them for them. Disciple them for those, all right? It should always keep going. That's the process, all right? If, if, if we ever stop equipping and empowering, discipleship is stopped. And eventually, once again, we're a church where they have to come and listen to what we have to say. In order for us to empower disciples to make disciples, we must understand three principles about empowering. Number one is we empower as soon as possible. This goes against the way that we like to do things. We like to wait until they've grown and matured, they've been walking with us, and now super Christian can take a Sunday school class. No, no, no. Empower as soon as possible. Equip before you empower, but empower sooner rather than later. The quicker that you can get people out and operating in their own ministry, the quicker they're going to mature and grow, the quicker they're going to start to be able to make disciples who they also can mature and grow. Empower soon, as soon as possible. Uh, Acts chapter 9 tells the story of a man who in a matter of days went from Saul the persecutor to Paul the preacher. Imagine if Ananias, who first discipled Paul, had told Paul that he needed to wait several years to mature before he could preach the gospel. That's the same, isn't it? Imagine Ananias be like, oh, okay, no, Paul, now, now that you got saved, you need to sit here with me and watch what I do for the next two or three or four or five years, and then, then we're going to let you go and start, start preaching. That's kind of the way that we do things. But imagine if Paul would have had to wait two or three years before he could start preaching the gospel. How many people got missed? What would the world we're living in today even look like? All of us are Gentiles. We got saved because of what Paul did. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters of the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them to be bound in Jerusalem. And immediately, this is Acts chapter 9, 1 and 2, now I'm in verse 18, 
Immediately something like scales from his, from his eyes, and he gained sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying that he is the Son of God. All right? Uh, number two, equipping happens before, during, and after empowering. All right? So just because you have been empowered and sent, it doesn't mean that now you know everything and you're doing it yourself. You're still in a relationship. You're still continuing to be equipped. You're still continuing to be taught. You're still continuing to be empowered as, as you grow in your ministry and we grow in community in ministry. All right? Eventually, whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else, the ministry that God has called you to has got to fit together with a body. Okay? You should never be the hand running around out here by yourself. Even though you're the hand and that's your ministry, the hand has got to be connected to the body. All right? which means that you're in relationship with other people who are doing other things. You're in relationship with leaders who are going to continue to guide you, teach you, encourage you, uh, correct and rebuke you if necessary. All right, we've got to be open to those things. So the, the equipping process happens before, during, and after you become empowered. All right, and this is what we saw with, with Paul even. But before he went out to go do his ministry, he spent some time with the, with, with the brothers there in Jerusalem. He could have just went out and started preaching. But first he went and presented himself to, to the leaders of the church there in Jerusalem. Uh, and we see other times where uh, Paul and Peter were having a, a bit of a disagreement. And where are they at again? They're in front of the leaders in Jerusalem. He stayed in relationship with those guys. Empowering people to take ministry responsibility without proper training and well-established foundation is both unwise and unfair. If I haven't equipped you before I sit you up to leave, I've set you up to fail. That's not fair for me to do that to you. All right. Though Paul began to preach almost immediately after his conversion, he did have that conversation with those guys I just talked about. So after equipping, empowering, and sending his disciples out, Jesus always had debriefing sessions. When his disciples returned, they reported their victories and defeats. Uh, check out Luke chapter 9. I'm going to read 1, 2, and 10. And 1 and 2 says, He called the twelve together and gave them the power and authority over all demons to cure diseases, and sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Uh, then in verse 10, on their return, the apostles told them all that they had done, and they took them and withdrew to a town called Bethsaida. Right? So he sends them out, they return, and they sit down. Right? How did it go, guys? What did you see? What did you experience? What happened with you? Man... I tried to cast this demon out, and that thing, it just wouldn't go. I don't know. Okay, let's, let's talk about it. How? They, they went through. He said, okay, I, I've empowered you, but now let's, let's talk about it. Let me teach. Let's work our way through this. Let's see what to do. Okay? All right. Let's go do it again. And you see Jesus constantly withdrawing. You know, he, he had ministered a lot of people, but he would withdraw with those few and continue just pouring into their lives. The equipping process did not end when he empowered them and sent them. He continued equipping them. So leaders, when I'm saying we're going to empower people and get out of their way, it doesn't mean that we're out of our lives. We are still there to continue equipping them to do the work of the ministry as we see them mature and grow in the ministry God has called them to. Number three, empowering is risky but necessary. Again, the underlying fear and our hesitancy of empowering people is what if they make mistakes? What if they make me look bad? I mean, what if I put a guy in ministry and he starts teaching people things that are unbiblical? It happens all the time. It happens. <laughs> all right. Does that mean that we should never empower anybody? No. It means we teach, we correct, we rebuke, we pull people out of ministry if we need to, and we, we continue shifting and adjusting. And, and it's, it's life with people. It's just that way. Whether you're in ministry, whether you're in business, or whether you're in a family, this is the way life goes. People let us down. People do stupid stuff. There will never be a shortage of stupid people in this world. We will not run out of those. All right? Maybe once I'm dead and gone, you'll have a chance. But until then, we're here. Just be ready for us. All right? People are going to make mistakes. And that's okay. We allow them to, to continue and to grow through that. Uh, mistakes are not optional in ministry. It's basically required. As leaders, it's important that we create empowering environments where believers are encouraged to take risks. A lot of times why we don't want to jump out and we don't want to say, we don't want to 
we, we say things like, well, I'm not smart enough, I don't know enough, I can't do this, is because we're so afraid to take a risk and do something that we can't do. As leaders, we have to create an environment where it's encouraged to take risk and it's okay to make mistakes. And if we do that, we've created an environment where people can grow. Finally, we have the power to be a witness. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that when the Holy Spirit comes, you will have, you will receive the power, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. The power that we have to be a witness comes from the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from the people who taught us. It doesn't come from our pastors. Right? We want them to equip us. We want them to empower us and send them out because we want to do what we're doing in relationship and in decency and order. But the power comes from the Holy Spirit, which now wraps me back to where we started. All right, We said that the preaching on Sunday morning is not what kingdom ministry is all about, but it's a part of it. Operating in spiritual gifts is not kingdom, the, the kingdom ministry, but it is a part of it. Why? Because we were giving spiritual gifts for what purpose? To be a witness. And that is the kingdom ministry. Whatever spiritual gifts you're given is given to help you do better at the mission that you were given in the first place, to go and make disciples. So I'm not saying that those things have nothing to do with kingdom ministry. I'm saying they're, not the, the, they're the means, not the end. Going door to door and sharing the gospel if you're good at that, you can do it. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying do it for the purpose of making disciples. If preaching is what you can do, do it. But do it in such a way that you're equipping and empowering other people to go out and make disciples also. This is what God has called us to do, guys, is to make disciples. And I think if we kind of catch on to these phases and we create a culture of engaging our community and purposely being in a relationship whether that's through the food uh, pantry that we have going on, passing out cookies here on the side of the road, or whatever other ideas you come up with. Say, hey, I, I need to do this so that I can be in relationship with some people. Just get in relationship with some people. Engage the community. Generally, we do that by meeting needs. But it doesn't have to be that way. The need might just be friends, okay? But we do that by meeting needs. We engage. We build relationships. We establish foundations. We establish foundations, we equip, we empower, and we send. The power of any church, guys, is not in the number of people we can gather together here. It's in the number of people that we can send out to do what God has called them to do. And if we build a culture and a system here that allows every single person that comes into the door to be successful, then there's no way we can lose. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity now to ask me any questions, and I'll take a chance to discuss them here in community as, as, as we do. And uh, otherwise, that, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And then, so I don't know if Greg wanted to take a chance to say something, uh, but what, what, this is just to start, to start the conversation, to figure out now how are we going to take this, this material, to this one-to-one, -one, how are we going to take this building that the Lord has given us in this community and impact the people who are living. That's, that's really the end.